All right, so I guess I just wanted to share a little bit about where my heart has been at for a while um, and what I feel like the Lord has been teaching me a lot recently. So I would probably sound like uh, a bit of a broken record by saying that this year didn't go exactly as any of us had planned it to. Um, nonetheless, here I am talking about it anyway. Um, the beginning of this year you know, before the world kind of stopped spinning for a while. Um, life was going pretty good for me. I, I honestly, I couldn't complain. Um, I was doing well in school. I had a job that I really enjoyed. Um, I was meeting new friends. Um, and my spiritual life was on track. It was really great. Um, and just as I started to get really excited and really happy with where I was at, COVID-19 put an extremely long pause on my life and the lives of everyone around me. <laughs> um, and through the quarantine, I tried to keep up with everything as best as I could, but I found that I was getting really exhausted trying to go about life as normal as possible. Um, and before I knew it, like, I was falling behind in classes. Um, I lost my job. Um, I couldn't see my friends anymore. Um, so that was really hard. But I think the hardest thing that hit me was that I stopped praying. And, you know, I didn't mean to. It just kind of happened. Um, I think I was in this place where I just, like, kept pushing it off. Because I was stuck at home all the time. I was just like, you know what, I'll do it later. It's fine. I'll get to it. And then I just never would. I was just really inconsistent. Um, and don't get me wrong. Like, I mean, I still heard Mass in my living room every Sunday. And I would pray before meals and with my family. Whenever I was, like, around other people. Um, and we would pray, like, in a household or um, in some kind of group meeting. Like, I would follow along. But... Uh, if I was being completely honest, my own personal relationship with Jesus was basically non-existent and I could tell that it was starting to take a real toll on my well-being. But it was like the more time that I spent away from him, like the more time I spent not praying, the more I wanted to hide because I felt so guilty for letting myself get to where I had gotten when I knew where I had been not only just a couple months ago. And I didn't want him to be disappointed or angry with me, so I just stayed away and I avoided it. You know, living my life every day cut off from the Lord. And I found myself as time went on, walking through the like deepest, darkest valley that I had ever sunk to, not only spiritually, but mentally, I felt really isolated and really, really lonely. And nobody knew because I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> I felt like if I shared um, how much I was struggling, like I would have been burdening someone and I felt like it was a problem that I had to fix on my own like no there wasn't anything that anybody else could do about it so what's the point in telling anyone um and it wasn't until like you know some time had passed and I spent probably close to like an hour um in adoration just like on my laptop um, in my room um that I had decided like Maybe I should, like, talk to someone. <laughs> um, so I FaceTimed a really close friend um, and started to share with her how I was feeling. Um, and needless to say, I couldn't quite keep it together. Um, so <laughs> as I cried and talked and vented, um, she stayed really quiet and she just listened. And after I gained a little bit of composure back, she started to talk to me. And 
something that really stuck with me um, from the many like encouraging and comforting words that she had shared with me that night was that even in the times when it hurts really bad, it you don't bear that weight on your own. She said that he's there carrying that cross right next to you and loving you all the way through it. His love for you is consistent. The Lord promises us over and over, time and time again, that he loves us. And that love is constant. It's, it's never ending. It's always seeking you. It's forever pursuing you. And it, it's a type of love that is present and it's alive and it surrounds us. His love for you and I is consistent even when we aren't. It's just up to us to open up our hearts, invite him in, and allow him to show us that love. I'm sure that there are a million verses that um, speak to this idea and sum it up really well, but one that I really love is Isaiah 54, 10, and it says, Though the mountains fall away and the hills be shaken, my love shall never fall away from you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord who has mercy on you. So as we enter into this time of worship, um, I just ask that you open yourselves up, like really, really open yourselves up to the love that the Lord is trying to show you.
No.
with fear and trembling. As Christ is for me. Lord God, we praise and thank you for bringing us together today to praise and to worship you, to spend time with each other and to spend time with you. Lord God, I praise and thank you for the way that you love us. I ask that you Help us open up our hearts to receive that love. In this we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.
Good morning. 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 Once again, yeah. welcome back. Welcome back. It's Saturday morning worship once again. I'm Mike from New Jersey. I'm Pat from Southern California. Pidong and and so from Houston and our special guest, my sister from another mother. Woo! Ooh, I'm the Jesse. Woo! I'm the Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jesse. Wow. From where? Do you know where she's for from? Virgin- for Virginia. For Virginia. Sorry, I just woke up. Okay, good. He got it right, right? Yeah, yeah, he got it right. You got it right. Okay. Hey, hey, Jess. Before, before I forget, thanks for leading us into worship. That was awesome. Yeah, oh, yeah, that was awesome. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. I was so excited to be able to do it. So there's a, you know, <laughs> uh, yep, um, yep, you made me cry. Uh, there's a lot of things that you hit in there that was, um, I know was very uh, personal for you, but I think it it's something so important for everybody because a lot of people will be able to relate um, on that one. So um, how long have you been, uh, was that something you've already discussed anywhere? Obviously you said that was probably the first time you brought it up, right? Um, if I remember correctly. Um, I have taught maybe like certain de- details I've like shared with people. Like um, I remember when I like started um, up this school year and I was like meeting up with some of my friends, we had like gotten into conversations about like what it was like being in quarantine I would share like bits and pieces and stuff, but the like full thing that I like shared today, like only a couple people really like know about it. So, and, and there was one big thing that that really hit me, made me realize it's it's very similar to what I always feel is, <clears throat> you know, sometimes we we just don't share a lot of our burdens with people because we feel like, uh, you know, it's. I can carry it myself or I don't want to bother them with, with all this. Cause this is probably not a big deal for them. They probably wouldn't care. And if they do, they'd probably feel now I'm going to worry them, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So it, I, I thought that was pretty brave of you to, to talk about that because um, a lot of us would always think it is brave to just hold it all in, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's a, I don't know. I just hope Enzo, when when he becomes your age, he, he would learn from all of that and not be afraid to tell me if he gets to that point where, oh, this is probably just not even important. You know, I, mm-hmm. I hope he would always think that it will be always important to me. Yeah, I remember like when I talked to my mom about it for the first time, because I actually like waited a really long time before mm-hmm. talking to my mom about it she had the same reaction. She was like, I, I wish you just would have talked to me about mm-hmm. it. Like, and she was telling me like, you wouldn't have ever been a burden. Like, I just wanted to help you carry it. And like, I didn't like, I, I, I didn't fully understand it. Like I saw that, you know, I heard that she was saying it to me, but I almost was like, but like, what could you have done about it? You know, like, so I totally get that. Like my mom had the same reaction. So. How about you? It's, 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 it's um, <laughs> No, I was just going to mention that, you know, um, when you were talking about that, you know, I, I, I have a 13 year old daughter. So, you know, Mm -hmm. me as a teenager now, and, um, you know, we always tell her, you know, to just make sure, you know, you tell us everything and, and, you know, she's been good with that. Um, but you know, again, as a parent, you know, our, our, our wish is, you know, to, to, for our children to be able to be open and be able to, to be comfortable about talking about, you know, anything, you know, right, Pidong, Pat? Yeah. And it's, it's such an important topic. I mean, I have Enzo here with me. I don't know what, do you feel Enzo? I'll put you on the spot, right? <laughs> <laughs> what are the things that your parents can do so that you'll feel more comfortable um, just saying if if you feel like um in this position of at the it's like things are so crazy but i don't think my mom or my dad would find this really important so i'll tell them anyway what would make you feel more comfortable to say that to so i'll just tell my dad well, I, it's probably just me i don't think it's like you guys unless it's because 
we had this conversation, like, it's always right after music lessons or whatever. I always think, like, uh, every time I tell them what happened or if there was, like, an Instagram video, I, f I feel like they always find what's what's already wrong about it and other than them what's good about it. It's, like, you know, I can't use that example. Okay. Um, it's, it's just, like, they always go for the bad stuff. That's from my perspective. But then, like, maybe... maybe Maybe what I can do is just like tell you, tell you guys more of what what happened and just be prepared to take it all in or whatever. Mm, but, the good and the bad. Yeah, but I just feel like whenever I get back from like school or whatever, it goes all the way back to it's all, it goes all the way back to bad. Like you would get you guys would see like something that's already wrong with it. It's kind of like how um I don't know how mommy doesn't see you wash the dishes every night. <laughs> yeah so uh, i think i think I, I get what you're saying it's more like um try not to be too critical all the time but i think like every kid mm. has that sense of feeling not because i know because you always dad always tells us like we have really high expectations of you and we, and you know that is true we, yeah that's really really well go, going back well, i mean going really quick um uh chess so i know you had that that feeling of not being able to talk to anybody and like you said uh, you, you were in that dark place mm -hmm. i guess one of the questions i want to ask you is is this your first time going through that or have you experienced really something like that before as well uh i think like i've had periods of like like spiritual dryness before that I thought was like really bad. And I think it's just from like, you know, growing up around it all the time and like mm. kind of like you grow up comparing your own personal relationship with God to like the people around you. You're like, oh, well, she's like doing this and mm. going and doing all of that. Like she looks so holy and like I'm not, e I'm like not even praying as much. And like basically the only thing I'm doing is going to mass. Like, um, only. I, I I've had times where I like get into those spots, but it was never anything like this. And I think it's because I'm like such an extroverted person. Like I'm very like social. And so the whole aspect of like quarantine and like being by yourself all the time is like really scary. And it like made me like think about a lot of stuff just cause I didn't have a lot of other things to do. Um, and I think that that's kind of like where that seed of like insecurity almost like was planted because I just had so much more time to spend by myself. But that, that goes also with the same question I'm going to ask with um, Enzo, um, where you, uh, Enzo was saying if he felt like there's, you know, there's a lot of expectation from him. So did that hinder you from talking to your mom and dad? Because, you know, they expect you to act a certain way. And because of that, you're just kind of holding back, and I, I don't like even know how to. Like a standard that you put on yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, is yeah. this my question or? Yes, it's still it's still you. And basing off what, oh, what okay. Enzo said, is that the reason? Could that be one of the reasons why? Because there are standards for you. Oh yeah, for that... sure. That's such like a that's like a huge thing that I've like felt like I've always struggled with, and obviously like it's unintentional. Like no one realizes that that's what they're doing, but it's it's almost like oh, like, Chessie, that's Peppa and Enzo's younger sister. Or, like, that's mm. Queen Bee and Tanichi's, like, daughter. Like, uh, you know, stuff like that. It's like, oh, all these people, like, know all the cool stuff that, like, my family has done. And so they're going to expect me to, like, act a certain mm. way and, like, be a certain way. And, like, I felt that a lot when I was, like, in the youth and I was, like, a leader and stuff. I felt like I wasn't, I shouldn't. Um, have these like moments of weakness I shouldn't like open up about these moments of weakness because so many people like mm. have <laughs> their own views of like what I should be like and um, how I should act and things like that so it was almost like I don't want them to change the way that they see me so I'm just like gonna bury it no one's gonna know about it mm -hmm. so that no one it doesn't change like everyone just sees me the way that they see me and it's fine you it's know what uh, I have something. It, it, it's it's funny because I, uh, I I lit up when when she was talking about the expectations of herself because some teenagers have this um, need to be accepted by by 
dressing up a certain way, driving a certain car. And Chessie's um, standard is being holy. And that is amazing to me. It's, uh, I mean, you, you probably put it on yourself, but the fact, the, the fact of the matter is you actually strive to be that. And, uh, and that's so inspiring to me is that, because a lot of us sometimes just don't, we just let go. <laughs> and, uh, and honestly, I mean, to add to that, I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like today. A lot of people are going out today, if they could go out, mm -hmm. if they, are, they would be wearing masks. They would be wearing something that they are not. And um, for them to actually come out of the dark, basically, it's, it's scary for them. And I think a lot of mm -hmm. teenagers put upon themselves. I mean, um, I have a teenager, too, and I know there's pressures. I, I don't know what that is exactly. And I, I have some idea of what she's going through, but <laughs> it has to come from her. Like you, mm -hmm. Chess, you had to tell your mom. Yeah. And, yeah, your standard is to be holy, but um, it's, it's – I think it's still that – it's funny how – the guy downstairs wants to make sure that, oh, you're trying to be all holy, then, oh, well, I'm going to make you go through this little thing, and now yeah. mm -hmm. let's see. Let's see what you think. And you just shared about, about that, and that's, 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 uh, Pidong's right. I was, I was emotional for you, because I know you kind of shared this to our family meeting. Just for you guys who don't know, she's my niece, so. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's watching, she's my niece. So, um. So it was kind of uh, it was kind of cool that you shared about that, um, and I th many people are going through that. Um, Mike, I think you were about to say something earlier. I cut you off. No, I'm sorry. I was I was just gonna say it. I, I, you know, first of all, I I honor you for just being so bold and and to share you know your experiences at this moment. And but it kind of made me realize too as a parent, you know, and it hit me, you know, when you mentioned about you know when you were growing up, you know, because you know you were the daughter of you know. Uh, you know, Queen Bee and, and you know, and, and Tunichi and, and you're the youngest, you know, s sister of, you know, Pepe and Enzo, you know. It kind of put you up automatically kind of on a, you know, certain level where I think, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, it kind of puts pressure on you, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. And I think as a parent, for me, it made me realize because, you know, we're, we're in the community we're in the leadership role, you know, and, and we, we have households, we do this, we do that. And it kind of made me think, you know, that maybe my, my kids are going through this at one point, and especially with, you know, my teenager now, Mia, you know. Um, so it kind of made me uh, more sensitive about, mm. you know, stuff, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. it makes me more careful now and, and be kind of, you know, mindful of, you know, I, I don't want her to, you know, to go through, you know, any pressure like mm -hmm. this. But, you know, for the people that are listening, especially for people that are, you know, of your same age, you know, how would you, you know, um, encourage them to, you know, um, to make sure to, to be open, you know, and, and not to carry that burden, you know, you know, on your own and, and you know, be open, you know, with your family, your parents especially like i wish i could say that like like oh just be open like it's okay mm -hmm. people want to listen to you yeah, but it's hard. so much harder said than done and like as much as like the pressure that i was feeling uh, was coming from like an outside source a lot of the pressure that i was putting on myself was from me like mm -hmm. i did that like no one was actually like expecting me to be perfect all the time it's mm -hmm. like me so i think that's like where it has to start i think the key is to really like the first step is to be vulnerable with god that's like the first thing because i think even like in that i was like i don't want him to see it it's messy it doesn't look good right now i don't mm -hmm. want him to see it and so i'm like thinking all the time like how do i fix like what's going on in here like do i spend an extra hour like in adoration do i just pray for like 20 minutes right now like what do i need to do so that i look good for him, for God, like, how do I do that? But it's, th the thing is like, what has taken me so long to like understand is that he like sees that already. Like he knows that it's really messy and he loves me anyway. And so I think once you accept that and you're willing to like share your struggles with him, because even though he like knows what's going on, like he wants, I mean, like you guys, like all of you guys are parents, you want your kids to share with you. Like it's the same thing 
with him. Like he wants us as his kids to share with him, like the things that are going on in our lives. And I think once we're vulnerable enough to share it with him, like it's like the first step in being able to be vulnerable and share it with people in your own lives. (laughs) How do you, I have a question for Jesse. So since like I, so since I like go to a Catholic school, I don't know. I just get that whenever I'm around my friends, I just, I don't know. I just become closer to to God or to him. And it's just weird because whenever we're just in church alone or we're just playing for mass, I just get fidgety all of a sudden. But it's Mm -hmm. like, since even though we're in a Catholic school and we're like being taught like how to worship and have a religion class, um, some like, actually most of us are like most of us we don't know how to or they don't know how to worship or whatever they would actually just like rock on to the worship songs during mass and it just be they would always laugh but then i'm just me me and my friend we're just kneeling on the floor and we're just praying and it's like just so weird for us and it's we, it, we get it gets us aggravated and and I was like same as you. Like I always notice whenever we're in F- F- FCJC, the conference, I always see the youth and all the all the kids praying, and all of them worshiping. And like, I could I only do like a only do that like once a year only there. Like so, mm-hmm. how do you build up like spiritual confidence or just like confidence in general? Mm-hmm. That's a that's a big question. It's a good question. <laughs> I I, <laughs> it's like just again, like it's something that's so much easier said than done, but it's just like, you have to not care. Like you have to just not care because like, once you start to forget the things that are going around you and focus on the thing that's important, which is God, like that's who you're worshiping. Like it's like nothing else matters. And like, you don't need to think about like, how do I become more confident? Like, how do I do this so that I don't look stupid? Like none of that matters because the only people in the room are you and Jesus. Right. I'm not, I'm, yeah, I'm not the person that sees this line, calls me cringy or whatever. I, I don't, I, I, I never ha- say that to you. You just said that like I did. 20 seconds ago. Okay, I, did. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, I learned that Expo- word from him. Yeah. I learned that from him, cringy. Like but it's like, I don't, my friends always say that you're stupid, you stop acting weird, but like, I don't care. I'm not that person that would like, I would always like, try to be cool or whatever. It's not a phase mom or like something like that. But like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not like that. I'm more like, I'm more like focused on trying to be good and trying to make good grades like that. Like there's this one kid in my class and she's always making perfect grades and always being, being kind and always being helpful and always being good. I'm like, it's hard for me because it's like, distracting forgot what my teacher called it where you always get distracted all the time because of your friends and it just influences you to be and i'm trying and i'm trying to be more aware of like what friends mm-hmm. i should actually follow in the future yeah. and so it's kind of hard to like know what 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 friends or what people i should be around yeah. with if i'm gonna oh yeah gonna i mean that's a huge thing growing up like trying to figure out the right people to surround yourself with like i mean i've gone through like troubles upon troubles in like in friends and figuring out like it really comes down to the fact of like who is leading you closer to heaven like who is leading Mm. you closer to god and it could even be the people who like aren't catholic like they don't have to be like they don't have to believe the exact same thing as you to make you feel like you're closer to jesus like you can Mm you can see Jesus through anyone. It just, it's how you look at the situation. And I think when you surround yourself with good people who you can see Jesus through, then, I mean, a lot is easier after then. There's a famous, uh, I don't know if you heard about this famous saying, um, I'll tell you who you are. Show me your friends. Yeah. Show me your friends. I'll tell you who you are. Yeah. So basically, you know, for Enzo and, and Chess, you know, I think um, it's it's who you surround yourselves with, you know, um, and you pray about the people that, you know, that you're surrounded with and that whole mm-hmm. thing, you know, and, and just praying that, you know, um, they take you closer and closer to Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes a difference think, to have friends who, who ask, sorry. Uh, but I think... Who, uh, 
Chessie hit it, you know, when she said and mentioned, you know, vulnerability. Yeah. I think that's the key to to be vulnerable with with God before you can expect to to open up with your own close uh, friends. This is this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, um it's a window for the future for me. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, most definitely. I think I just wanted to, I wanted to add I'm, I'm, my video is kind of acting a little funky for me here. Uh, my voice is ahead of my my video, but um, Chess, I think one of the things um, both Chessy and Enzo, you're born into parents who are very active in church. Um, um, I I on the other hand grew up with it. I, I I grew up when I think they joined when I was eight years old, if I'm not mistaken, and I pretty much grew up in community, but I wasn't born into it. And like you said, Chess, and even you, Enzo, I think you're putting pressure upon yourself because of the standards that we believe our parents want us to be. Mm-hmm. And as a parent, now I'm saying, I just want my children's souls to be saved. I want them to have a relationship with God. Mm-hmm. Um, but it all comes from us, you know. And, and if, if your parents are influencing you that way, then praise God. Uh, but I think Chess and, and even Enzo and anybody can come in here. Um, it's funny, we always talk about the people who, who you know, what if they didn't ever encounter God? But mm. I feel like this, this topic today is more for people who've actually been born into it. People yeah. who've been in community for a long time mm-hmm. and are finding that spiritual dryness. And they're finding it in ways where they didn't expect. Like you, Chess, you found it in the, this, this, this pandemic, which is causing you to go crazy. And I think for a lot of people, even for youngsters like Enzo, and even my daughters, um, they're finding it where it's being cooped up in a house. It's like being in jail mm. for them. I mean, we have to literally b- drag them out and, hey, let's go outside. Let's walk. Let's do something. But um, but I think, um, Chess, I wanted to ask you if, if you can. Uh, I know I texted. I, I sent a message to, to B- Bidong to ask you this question, but I'm just going to say it. What can you suggest to our brethren, our young brethren, even the ones who are our age as well, who are who have been... Who who have accepted the Lord? Yes, Enzo said. Well, how can we get that confidence? But more importantly, how can what did you do aside from talking? But what did you do to get out of that rut and say, you know mm-hmm. what, Lord, I surrender it to you? It's almost like you're making a recommitment. What did you mm-hmm. have to do to go to that? And once you share that to us, um, maybe you can end it by just praying for us and maybe making mm-hmm. that a prayer as well. But yeah, could you could you just explain? how you got out of that rut it's like it's like an everyday thing i think you have to wake up and you have to choose that like this is something that i want to do this is what i want my life to look like um i think for me it was it was something that we jeff sansa actually told me because we were texting about this one day and it was like he told me he was like you just need as much as you want to hide and as much as you don't want to do it you just need to spend time with god like even if it's it it's uh you wake up in the morning and you do the sign of the cross or um you sit in your car and on the way to school you listen to worship music you know wherever you find the lord like just spend it it doesn't matter how short that time is and Mm. that like helped me a lot because like i think i felt like to reconcile like what I had done with God, I needed to spend like infinite amounts of time, like doing everything right. When really it was just like, what he wants is for us to just be consistent and to do it all the time and be good about doing it. You know, I read a book last year um, with like our campus ministry called Time for God by Father Jacques Philippe. And it talks a lot about how like prayer, like, that's just like long, but it doesn't happen very often. Um, doesn't mean as much as prayer that's like short or angry or, um, or really sad. Um, that does happen like, you know, consistently. Um, and so for me, it was just like sitting down and really like being disciplined. Like you are going to sit down and you're going to pray for five minutes to get out. And it was like, once I, you know, was doing that consistently, like I could build on it because I had that foundation um, of it. So it's really like, you have to get up and you have to choose. That's like really what it comes down to. It has to be your choice. Wow. When did you grow up? 
<laughs> okay, just uh, lead us in, you know, with yeah. that note of chess, just uh, lead us into prayer and just close this thing and thank you again for anything. Thank you again. And uh, thank we you, definitely Jesse. want you back. <laughs> yeah. I would love to be back. Yeah. You can do your mom and you. I mean, Enzo's here all the time. Oh, mom and well. daughter tandem. Should do it. All right, just lead yeah. us. Lead us into prayer. All right. So I'll put ourselves in the presence of the Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. From the Holy Spirit. We just had a prayer. Lord God, I praise and thank you for bringing us here today um, to just fellowship and um, to talk about you and to learn about you and the things that you're trying to teach us. Um, Lord God, I, um, I ask that you speak your love over all of us. Allow us to really open ourselves and allow you to love us the way that you want to. I pray that you allow us to be vulnerable, to be confident in our vulnerability with you and with the people around us. I pray that um, you give us the strength to be consistent. You give us the strength to wake up every morning and to choose you, to choose a life with you. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. And I'll just close this out with a glory be. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Mike, Amen. can I ask you to pray over Chessie? Yes. Father God, we just uh, come before you once again, and, and we just uh, lift up to you, Chessie. We lift up to you her heart, her desires, Lord God, of her heart, Lord God. Make her, Lord God, the woman that you wanted her to be, Lord God, and uh, just continue to allow her to inspire other people, especially the young ones around her, her family, her friends, her peers, and just allow her to shine and, and to be a light for them and for us. And uh, we've been inspired, Lord God, by her. And so we ask you, Lord God, to, to just grant her that grace, Lord God, to continue your work to spread your word and to glorify you in everything that she does lord god and keep her safe and healthy together with her family and all of this father we ask in the mighty name of your son jesus christ who lives and reigns with you one god forever and ever amen amen, amen. father amen. amen thank you Jess. oh yeah all right Jess. see you guys next week and uh, happy, halloween. happy halloween happy halloween, happy halloween. enjoy safe. everybody Okay, God bless. <laughs>